thrifting is definitely the funnest part about selling on eBay, but it can unfortunately kill your eBay business. If you go out to these thrift stores more than you actually sit back and list your items, that's a surefire way to absolutely not have success on eBay. In this video today, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go out to a ton of different thrift stores. It is gonna be a thrifting only video, but I'm gonna step you through the process of only buying the right items. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean you should buy it. And what we're gonna to use today is the eBay app, and I'm actually gonna show you how I sort it out to know exactly what the item's worth. Uh, and then we're also gonna show you what the e-profit calculator says from a profit perspective. So that every time that we go to the checkout today, we're just gonna be buying the right items only. So when we're out thrifting, one way to easily get your thrifting comp checking done a lot quicker is to lock out your filters. I'm gonna click on filter, and then I'm gonna scroll all the way down, and I'm gonna click on customize. And then once I've clicked on customize, there's gonna be three boxes, and I'm gonna always select that lockable filters, and then I'm gonna hit show results. And what that does is it locks out anything in the filtering here that you wanna select. And we've got locked out sold and completed listings. And then we're also gonna to go to sort, and we're gonna lock out highest price plus postage. What that does is it now gives us 136 sales of Harry Potter, but it puts it from the highest price all the way down to the lowest price. So that when we're searching up all of these titles here, we're gonna get a really accurate representation of what the items are actually worth on eBay. Um, so the first one that we're gonna search up now that we've locked that out is the Net DVD. So I'm gonna type in the Net rather than, you could go ahead and barcode scan it, but I'm gonna type it in to get a more accurate result. And when I have a look here, it says that it's worth about 40 bucks mm -hmm. um, for the complete series. And there's another one for 35. And then there's 30. I'm pretty sure there's six, because we've got, this one here says there's six discs, because it, it was a video store copy, which is fine. Video store copies aren't an issue. I'm still happy to sell that. But I think that's 100%, because it's only a dollar. It's mm. only $3 in, and we're gonna probably be able to list this up for 30. Yeah. So that's just a, an automatic yes. This C change though, we've got, episodes one to 13, and then we've got episodes one to 13. So we've got series one and three. So I'm gonna type in C change DVD. So it goes for the best sale is 53, but then the next best is 50. Then the next best is 45, and we've got a 40, a 40, and so I think because that'll go into a small satchel. Mm. It's only two, so we can't get the full $50, but we could get maybe 35 to 30. Yeah. And that's $4. Yeah. So that's a yes. Chicago Fire, we've got season one, two and three, and four. And then we've got What's one, two, one? five. Good find. Mm. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and we've got one, two, three. Now, Chicago Fire, there's a whole lot more seasons. There's 11 that we need. So this is a partial set of five. So if I scroll all the way down, one to seven is going for about 35. These don't have a price tag on them. That's season five, six, and seven went for 26 bucks. Mm, not amazing. Not amazing. So I actually think I might leave it, but Chicago, so we're going to leave that based on the fact that we don't have more yeah. seasons. This one's good though. I think Chicago PD is going to be good. Just put that back on record. Okay. Chicago PD DVD. So this one, 10 seasons sells for over 100. But we've got one to four. One to six goes for 60. There we go. Two, three, four, and five sold for 50. Uh, so I think this is a big win. Thank you. There you go. Oh, thanks very much. Much appreciated. Have a good day. $14.50. Yeah. So we didn't use the e-profit calculator um, to determine that, which is the other step that you could do if they were priced up a little more highly. Um, but when you're only paying $1.50, you know you're going to be in for a profit. So, very, very good find. Yeah. It's only a dollar. 
different um not the third table back. I still think they're worth it though, because it's um I think a complete set. You've got the first editions in the shelf. And then you've got a bunch of other ones. Some of these might be first edition. Like you just put these separate to those? I think we'd first of all just do a complete set. Can we also grab the three um, Harry Potter books in the cabinet? So see that there, you've got a comp of $300 for a hardcover one to seven complete set yeah. and first edition. And we've got three of them. Yeah. So we've got three, but then we can almost make up a complete collection there. Yeah. So that's what you want to be finding, the hardcover originals. Um, but we've got some extra spare ones as well. Yeah, they'll probably go for around $20 each as well. So 23 in total, we'll probably get like 150 150 bucks yeah. and four listings. So Harry Potter books are definitely one to try and find. Absolutely not. <laughs> Imagine trying to ship, ship something that. like that. Is it heavy? It's a little bit heavy. Remember, we're trying to find Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. 17 for 45. What did we need? <laughs> is it the one we needed? <laughs> no, it's not. Cordy, it is. <laughs> it was like this, and I was like, how can I? It's the only one. And it's a dollar. This is the one book we need to, really? to complete our set. Oh my goodness. <laughs> a lot of interesting things happen in this shop. It doesn't yeah. ever. <laughs> well, it might not have been a lot. But that is going to go a long way to picking up the sell-through rate of that Harry and Potter, Harry Potter set. Did I say Harry and Potter? <laughs> Harry and Potter. <laughs> These are great. $70. Let's do some research. Google? It might be worth um, using Google Lens. On cloud? On cloud link. What, what they want on eBay? Literally eBay price points. That's a shame. Oh, these are banging as well. How far? Bondi 7s. <laughs> no. Not well. <laughs> that is not well. Like someone donated that. That is insane. <laughs> Ninety dollars. I don't think you can get ninety on eBay for these. There's just too much like, heel burn. What? That is crazy. These are the worst shoes in the world. What are they pricing them at? Flip that over. Oh, there it is. There. Flip that over. Eighty for arrows. No. No. It's just entertainment now. Oh my god, that is entertaining. 20 is probably a bit gnarly. It is gnarly. So I think it's only worth about 40. But let's just do a, um, a show of solds versus active. Courtney. Harry Potter day. There you go. So you got 38 sold. And they're selling... See how the second edition? Mm. We don't have that. So we want to find those. That one? Yeah, 45 is like best price. They're all seconds, aren't they? Mm. Where's, go down to where all the firsts are. There they go, there's a group of them. So it's more like 35. Mm. Not but how many of them are active, available for purchase? Mm. So take the solds off. How many does it say? 170. 170. So if there's 170 listed and there's only 35 sales, yeah. that's a bad sell through rate. Pretty true. Let alone the fact that it's also 20 bucks. So we do not want to be doing that. So unfortunately, one of the most expensive thrift stores we've ever been into, um, Lifeline here in Mermaid Beach. If you're here on the Gold Coast, please don't bother going to that store. Uh, that is just disgusting. But um, hopefully there was a bit of education in there for you guys around sell-through rate. Um, such an important step just to check what is actually active. Um, I think so much of the time we just never bothered to do that, yet it, it just has such a profound impact on the success of your sales because if it's over, if there's more sold than there is active, it just means that you're gonna see your money quicker. 
Um, and it's just a simple little step as Courtney was doing in there, just a, a, a click of a button to reduce the solds to see what's active mm. um, can give you so much more information and uh, that'll ultimately help the sale. PlayStation Hit and Run PS2. Yep. So this is how many listed? Yep. 224. 224 listings. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be selling for about 100. Mm -hmm. How yep. many are active? Fifty-three active. Fifty-three active listings. So that tells me that this game is selling for four times as much as it's listed. Yeah. Wow. It's got like a four hundred percent sell-through rate. Yeah. So what that data there with that search shows is that it's going to sell for a hundred dollars. Fantastic. We want that. It's going to sell really quick as well, four times as much as it's been listed. So it's a really, really good quick selling game. And if you can find that game in a thrift store for maybe $20 or $30, I would still go ahead and buy it. Um, Facebook Marketplace, somebody selling it for $20 on Marketplace, I would buy it based on the data there showing you that it's actually $100 on eBay. When you're searching that highest price list of items, if you're first starting out as a beginner, I think you should price yourself in the bottom 25 percentile. So you shouldn't undercut the market but you should be in that bottom ranking of pricing. So say Simpsons Hit and Run was selling for $100 at its best case scenario, but then they were also selling in abundance for around $50 and you were a beginner seller, I'd be listing the item up for 65 bucks because you wanna to get to top rated seller status yeah. and top rated seller is 100 transactions and $3,000 in revenue. So if I'm at a point where I haven't yet made 100 sales on eBay and I've got a red hot game like Simpsons Hit and Run, I'd take the $35 cut and take a $65 sale price to get one more transaction under my belt towards that top rated seller status. Yeah. When you're a bit more advanced and you've been in it for a little bit like myself, obviously Courtney and I, Courtney two years, me four years doing this eBay thing, it's easier to price that Simpsons Hit and Run game up for $100 and get a $100 sale price because your store's so much healthier, you've got a lot of other video games in your store that are helping that Simpsons Hit and Run get found mm. and those games sell better. But when you're first starting out and you don't have any items in your store, there's no good feedback on your account, eBay's not helping you with top rated seller status, you just have to play at that lower end. Mm. But definitely don't undercut the market. There's so much I could say about pricing. And yeah. it's just so crucial to get right. It is. Two dollars for records. Not something we do a whole lot of, but I've just seen Elton John here, Breaking Hearts. Don't know the value of any of these, but we can look it up. Bruce Springsteen. Mm. Darkness on the edge of town. Electric Light Orchestra out of the blue. There's another one for 60. So that one's actually quite good. That's it there. Mm. So it's 35, 32, 30. It's worth about 30. Two in the 30. You almost have to put them into um, pizza boxes. Yeah. To send them off in shipping. Japan. <coughs> Looks as though it's the cheapest of the three. Yeah, probably not worth it. 25 and 20, so probably not worth Elton John. Mm. But those two, I think, yeah. I think we should definitely go ahead and do that. And there are a number of sales as well, which is good. And they're only going to be $4. Mm. Found these ones as well. We've got King of the Hill. They're all region one, so they're playing uh, in the US. But we've got a four, a one, a two, and a three and a six. And we've also got All Saints, Season 5. We've got a brand new copy of Cars 2. And then we found this one as well. The Complete Series 1 to 6 of Steel Game. And then we've got the Complete Series 1 to 4 of Shetland. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Okay guys, we hit a big milestone today. We've hit 29,000 subscribers. 29? Yeah, that's huge. Um, thank you everyone who watches and subscribes to the channel. It helps a lot. Um, we love making the 
content so yeah appreciate it you but and next, if you could subscribe if you're not subscribed what, what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> um but our next goal obviously is the biggest 3.0 30 000 subscribers um we'll have a little celebration for that yeah we want to celebrate asap because mm -hmm. we're so close so if you could hit the subscribe button to get us there, we're going to work out what we can do to celebrate the big three zero. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much for the support. It does Appreciate mean a lot. That. So there it is, guys. Hopefully some really, really fast turning over dollars here with all of this stock. It was a bit of a Harry Potter day. It wasn't meant to be a Harry Potter day, no. but it turned into one. Um, and then we've got some records and some DVDs. And yeah, I think, I think we'll do really well listing all of this up. So hopefully you've learned a thing or two coming on a bit of a thrip trip mission with us it was obviously a little bit different to the way we normally do a, a thrift video a little bit more educational for this one um but yeah had a lot of fun and courtney is now going to spend the next two hours listing all of this up so thanks for being here i'll leave you with another video right here on screen uh, we'll see you in the next one